So he put the box back, and it was bugging him, so he tells his wife, says, yes, I found your box, and I looked in it, and I apologized, and she was a little mad for a minute, and she goes, okay, now I suppose you want to know about the contents of this box, the contents of this box. He said, yeah. She goes, well, over the years, every time you preach a bad sermon, I put an egg in the box. He says, 20 years, four eggs, that's not so bad. But every time I get a dozen eggs, I take them to town and sell them, and I put the money in the box. That's where the $6,000 came from. Bad joke. Okay. What I wanted you to get out of last week's lesson was being a Christian can be tough at times. And people, even people you love, might look down on you, persecute you for being a Christian. And it's only going to get worse, I think, in this day and age. Stand strong in your faith and be ready at all times for the second coming of Christ. After youth group last week, Connor was up there joking, off, joking around with the mic, and he was pretending he was a... Flight steward. How many people here have flown on a commercial airline? Okay. There's always that part in the stewardesses or the stewards safety presentation where they talk about what to do if oxygen, they lose oxygen in the airplane. The masks fall down, but what do they say? Put it on yourself before you help others. Make sure that you are ready. In that case, it's ready to survive the lack of oxygen. But in life, please make sure you're the one that's ready with your faith. And then you can start working on your family. And I say that working on your family because it can be a lifetime process with people in your family that are not Christians. And it can be really hard. Your family is the hardest people to talk to about Jesus. Don't follow just anyone. And I think about this because now anytime there's something in the news they have a pastor that's t up there talking. The news media goes and finds this pastor. Well, there's lots of different types of pastors. And there's people that will preach anything. So just because they have the title of pastor, youth group leader, youth pastor, anything like that, don't just blindly follow them. 
The only way you're going to know if they're telling you the truth is to read your Bible. And we've been pushing and pushing and pushing that. Anybody here doing the read the Bible in a year? Got a few here? Good job. Keep it up. Now, like I said last week, if you fall behind, a lot of people fall behind and then they think, oh, I can never catch up. I'm just going to quit. Don't quit. So it takes you a year and a half. So it takes you six years. So it takes you ten years. Just keep at it. Okay, that's the end of last week. I saw, I heard something. I got kind of a three-part lesson tonight. Don't skip any. Three-part, yeah. Don't, don't skip over two. Three. Um, we didn't get the Bible, though. Someone want to grab the Bible? <laughs> Whose job is that? Yours? No. Well, then I'm slacking. <laughs> okay. Who's your job? Well, in this day and age, yeah. we're hearing a lot of stuff about persecution. But we're hearing a lot of a lot of things are changing in our lives right now. Somebody look up 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. 2 Timothy 1? 4, 1 through 5. Oh, I got it. No, I have it here. I got it. Go ahead. 4, 1 through 6? 4, 3 through 5. Okay. Four, three through five. For the time will come when men will not put up with the sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. You understand that? No. Just yeah. People are going to gather around people that will talk about what they want, not what they need. If they don't like something that's being said in this church, even though it might be the truth, they will go someplace else and will say what they want to hear. And the Bible tells us, they knew this 2,000 years ago, it was written down not to do that. So that was what I was talking about with pastors and stuff like that. There's people out there that will tell you anything, anything you want to hear. This is good, that's not. Right will be wrong and wrong will be right in the end days. Now we're moving on to point number two. First Timothy 2, 1 through 3. Who's got that? You guys, the end, what version Bible do you have? NIV. NIV. Go ahead and read it. Two, one through three. Yep. Yeah. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say. Are you in First Timothy? No. Oh, I was in First Timothy. I was. I swear. That's really embarrassing. That's okay. The whole world saw it. Uh, stop saying that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Val. One through three. Two. First Timothy two one through three. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercision, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Who has a version other than the NIV? I have the New King You have the New King James? What does it say in the New King James? It says, therefore I exhort first all that. Therefore I exhort first. Of all that, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior. Anybody like, you, what's that? Can I read number four? You can. Yep. So then it goes on to say, who, you know, in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Anybody got anything other than what you have your version you have? 
The New King James or the NIV? You want me to look up the living? I've got right here. No, in the message it says the first thing I want you to do is pray. Pray every way you know how. For everyone you know, pray especially for our rulers and our government. Government's rules. I can almost read that. For especially for our rulers and their governments to rule. So we all can be quietly about our business and living, simple, living simply. In humble contemplation, this is the way of our Savior. All these verses, doesn't matter what... Bible translation you have, it all says to pray for our leaders. Well, this one also says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Mm -hmm. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peacefully and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. The Bible tells us to pray for those in authority over us. Whether you, we voted for them or not, whether our families voted for them or not, it does not say in here that we follow them blindly. It says we pray for them. So we can be go quietly about our business and live simply in a humble contem contemplation. This is the way of our Savior. That's the message. But even though things are happening in our country, pray for our leaders. And someone said, yeah, but how can we pray for them? You know, they're shutting down social media or they're doing... Um, this, I didn't want them to get elected. Still pray for them. I'm not praying for them. They make me wear a mask. I've heard that. Pray for your leaders. Pray that God will intercede. Anybody here heard, heard of Nero? No, I've heard of him. What do you know about Nero? He's an who's a, who's a leader. Okay. Yeah. When these verses that we read were written, Paul gave these to Timothy. And Timothy was a young man at this time, probably in his early 20s. And everybody says, well, things were a lot better back then. If you want to know anything about Nero, he killed his own mother. Rome had burned. Most of Rome. Rome was in sections and all but like three or four of 12 or 14 sections of Rome all burned up. Nero blamed the Christians. So for fun, Nero would take Christians and put animal skins on them and put them out and let the beasts attack them. For lighting, Nero would put pine tar or pine pitch on Christians, put them in cages, and light them on fire, and that was his lighting. That's dark. It's, it's very dark. So don't think things were better back then than they are now. And still, back then, they were told to pray for their leadership. So no matter who our leaders are, we need to pray for them. Pray. Hi, Cassidy. Pray that they are doing the will of God. And if they're not, pray that they will find God. That's number two. Now we're going to go to number three. How many people saw the post on Facebook that I put out the other day to look for... Tell me who your favorite Bible characters are that are not Jesus. Who's got one? Who do you got? David. 
Why David? Because he stayed strong against the giant. Okay. John the Baptist. Okay. How much older was John the Baptist than Jesus? Weren't they like the same age? About six months, seven months, something like that. Who else has a Bible character? I was going to say uh, David. You're going to say David? Okay. Jesus. I, everybody but Jesus, Jesus I said. Just kidding, I had someone, but I can't remember. We'll come back to you. Paul. Paul? Yeah. Why Paul? Because he's like a perfect example of God changes people, and I really like his brothers. They're my favorite three. I remember Moses. Moses? Why Moses? Well, he had a cool story. He started off in a basket, <laughs> floating down the river. But also, so he's a basket. Because, case. Yeah, because he was like, because he was like, oh, I can't do it. But then he got really good at it, and then he was like, oh, I can't do it. But like, it showed the mistakes that he made, and he still ended up doing so much good for God. Job. Who? Job. Job? Why Job? I like Simon Peter because he's kind of like us in a big bonehead some of the times. But then at the end of it, he, at the end of his life, he figures it out and ends up dying upside down on the cross just because he didn't think he's worthy of dying like Jesus. Me? I just asked if you got one. Okay. Um, I had thought of David, but I also really like Martha. I like myself to be like Martha. Anybody over here? I like Esther. Because Esther was willing to just do as God asked her to do, and she was led moment by moment. And God used her to deliver a king. Nobody said Obadiah. That was supposed to be my name, was Obadiah. Well, I like your name. That's what my dad called well, me. I don't know where it came from because my grandma asked my mom, why Obadiah? She goes, well, it's a good biblical name. She goes, so is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I didn't have to Craig. I don't know how. Okay. Craig, I'm going to call you Obadiah now. I think it's you still have 1 Timothy? First Timothy? What? Yeah. 1 Timothy 4, 12. Hey, I thought of another Bible character. Okay. The Talking Donkey. <laughs> I like that one. That's like my favorite story. Anyway. Who owned the Talking Donkey? I don't remember. Some guy Halo. about the guy. Halo. Was, Halo. It's in like Kings and Numbers. It's around like that. Anyway. Okay. The Talking Donkey. Yeah. Twelve. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. <laughs> I think of that one, I think of you guys a lot. That verse. Because don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy was a young man. When the first, when Timothy 1 was written, when the second letter to Timothy was written, he was probably 30-ish or so. Um, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. young. Set an example for the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. I was thinking of two people pop into my mind that I think of when I look at those criteria. Young, their conduct, was good. Love, faith, and purity. The two people I picked, first, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and David. Probably David for a lot of the same reasons you did. How old was Mary when Jesus was born? We don't know this for sure, but we have a lot of history in there that will tell us about it. Most people say 12 to 14. A lot of times in history, at 11, girls were betrothed. 
meant you were engaged. It's a little bit more than an engagement that we have now because it was legally binding. Probably an arranged marriage. Their parents set it up. Her parents usually that she's betrothed. She was betrothed to, to Joseph. Joseph was another one that I was thinking about. We don't know how old Joseph was. Joseph is mentioned very little in the Bible. He's mentioned at the, the nativity story, the story of Jesus being born. And then again at the temple when Jesus was about 12. And then we don't hear of Joseph anymore. We don't really know what happened. There's a lot of theories out there. But who here is between 12 and 14? What would you do if some night an angel showed up and said, you're going to have a kid? Okay. Okay. You say that, but now you got to tell your mom where this baby's coming from. My mom? Uh -oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say my mom would believe me, but my parents definitely not. You know? So not only... Okay. Sweetie storks. So not only, in my opinion, now some of this is my opinion, and from what I was reading, other people's opinion too, God also had to touch a lot of the people around Mary. Because at that day, yeah. in that day, Mary could have been stoned for that. Joseph was very, very kind, and... That was one of the traits of Joseph, because the angel came to Joseph and said, hey, all is well, that's God's baby. You know, he was going to send her off. He, was, he didn't want her to get stoned. He was just going to send her off, and you go have that baby someplace else, and we'll get divorced and separate. Even though they weren't married, they would still have to get divorced when they were betrothed. What's that? Joseph. Oh, that's like, but then he had a dream. He had a dream too. The angel came to him in a dream. But Mary found favor with God. And that's kind of David's story too. They found favor with God. In order to find a favor with God, you would think that you'd have to fit a lot of those criteria up above. You know? Be an example to believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. You know, this was foretold hundreds of years before Jesus was born that he was going to be born to a virgin. How would you have felt knowing that you were carrying God's baby? You carried babies? Yeah, three of them. What would you think about that? I don't know. I would just kind of, I don't know. I, I can't imagine what a 12 to 14 year old girl would be thinking. I would be freaking out. I would be thinking it was a dream. I mean, yeah. Dream. Wouldn't you be like scared? Because like you have to have a savior inside of you. Like you gotta keep him safe, you know? You don't want to kill your baby before it's born? No. Yeah. Where did Mary go? Did she go to, um, she, she went to Elizabeth's. And who was Elizabeth pregnant with? John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And then the baby was, like, jumping around in there, and he was like... <laughs> yep. John the Baptist. Your mom's stressed. It's a very, very good story. But, you know, we've all read it just recently because of Christmas. But the second person that came to my mind was David. What do you think of when you think of David versus Goliath? I think of me. <laughs> you on the football field. Because that's all, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sports come to mind all the time when I think of David Blur. Quiet. When I was in school, I was in the mid 80s, early 80s. Sue was in the mid 80s. Whenever I would think about the basketball tournament, they would always mention a town called Edgerton. Anybody here ever hear of Edgerton? It's in southern Minnesota. It's in Minnesota? Yep. Wow. But that... I've been basketball They went undefeated. Were they tall? No. Were they short? They were tiny. Oh, and they came from a little tiny town. We love and there was only one state tournament. So instead of like now there's four or five for basketball, there was only one. So little tiny Edgerton took on everybody and won. They all call it the David and Goliath game. Hold up, can people do that? What's that? And it happened long before my time. Are they good at it? Dog, get off your phone. How many brothers did David have? How many brothers did David have? He had seven brothers. He was the youngest. And his brothers were like, for like, no, you can't do this, you're too small. Right? Oh, that was everyone else. All of the Everybody. Kids. His brother has even told him that. What like, are you doing here? Too small. And then the king gave him some armor and he's like, this doesn't fit. And so then he just was like, I'll be fine. I don't need it. Like, How so old was David when he took on Goliath? Uh, like, was he like 12 or something? 10? It's one of them other things we don't know. He was yeah. somewhere in there. But we know that he had seven brothers. And he's the youngest. And he had three older brothers that were in the army. In order to be in the army, you had to be 20 years old. So say the youngest one that's in the army is 20. There's four more after him. So if both of them are here apart, that would put him in that 14, 15 year range. If they were more than a year apart, he could even be younger yet. What if they, what if you have like five eights What if they're two or triplets? Yep. But technically, what I was reading, he could be up to 19. Because it doesn't say that his older brothers, the three of them were in the army, but it doesn't say that the other ones, the other ones were not in the army. It doesn't say that they weren't old enough to be in the army. It just says they weren't in the army. So, 15 is a very common theory on how old David was. Why? Because if you take the three older boys that are in the service, and the youngest one, say, being 20, and then they were all about a year apart, that puts David as the youngest down about 15. If, if, they, if he wasn't, if they were, say, two years apart, you know, that'd even be... would be like eight. Yeah. But you also have to figure, what did David do before he killed Goliath? He was a shepherd. He was a shepherd. What's that? Our shepherd do what? Nothing. I think I heard what you said, but what did you say? You said our shepherd's buff? Or yes. <laughs> they are... Do they have to carry their sheep? Sometimes they carry their sheep. Okay. Look at the look at the parable of the lost sheep. The one goes missing. And Jesus goes looking for him. The shepherd goes looking for him. The shepherd will do whatever it takes to protect his sheep. Because that's what they live off of is the money from their sheep. So David was a shepherd. And when David went to go down there and says, I can take on this guy, Saul says, no, you can't. You're just a shepherd. Well, what did David do as a shepherd? He killed a lion, and he killed a bear who was taking his lambs. He went up, he hit it, made it drop it, and killed it. 
You know, he didn't have a gun to carry. Whenever we think of shepherds, we think of these cute little boys in the Christmas program. Yeah. Or when we think of angels, we think of these cute little girls and the you know, little yeah. sheep over them and the little tinsel around their head. Yeah. Well, every time you hear of an angel in the, in the Bible, they scare people. Angels. And whenever you think of a shepherd, they probably stink. They're living with the sheep. They're probably as rough and tough as they come. But David was very good looking. The Bible says David was a very good looking looking young man. What did David do later on in life? He was like a How old was he when he became king? He was like 20. I thought he was like a young king. He was a young king. He was 30. About 30. When he became king. Between the time, the character of David is very, very good. And other people had alluded to that. David and Mary were not, because we're going back to Mary now, were not perfect people. But they were faithful to God. <clears throat> and between the time David killed Goliath and became king, he worked for Saul. Saul was jealous of David because people were singing songs about David and including Saul in there. Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand or whatever the song went because people really liked David. David liked working for Saul, but Saul was jealous of David. He tried to kill David many times. <laughs> but David had the opportunity to kill Saul, and he didn't do it. What did he do in these opportunities? Anybody remember? Yeah. Well, David and his men were hiding in a cave, and Saul and his men were chasing him. Well, Saul had to go to the bathroom. So he went up in the cave to go to the bathroom. He's doing his business, and David sneaks up and cuts off part of his clothes. And then Saul goes back out, and David's sitting there, hey, look what I cut off your thing, you know, your coat, your whatever you had on. I could have killed you, but I don't want to kill you. I respect you. Because David was very honorable. But Saul, for a minute, felt bad about that. Saul even gave him one of his daughters as, as you know, when he, asked, when he was a young man. And he took it away and gave, him to somebody, gave that daughter to somebody else later. But, um, David also, David also one time snuck into a camp. God had put everybody to sleep. David snuck into the camp. Saul was laying there, had his canteen and his spear stuck in the ground. In the helmet there. David took a few things. Next morning he hollers, Hey, look what I got. You shouldn't steal from me. So David's a thief. But everybody wanted it, they wanted yeah, David to kill Saul. Probably he's an honorable man. Not just hear that. <laughs> I guess I don't know if he gave it back. What's that? But he could have killed him. Everybody was wanting David to kill Saul. And David said, no, he's anointed by God. I'm not going to kill him. Once Saul turned away from God, people easily killed Saul. David didn't want nothing to do with it. And he actually struck down the person who finished Saul off. Saul was in battle. Saul got wounded. He wanted his armor bearer to kill him. And the armor bearer said, I can't do that. So Saul put his sword down, fell on his sword, pretty much killed himself. Well, then the armor bearer saw that. He killed himself. And then this other guy comes along, and he sees Saul there struggling, going to die. And Saul says, you know, put me out of my misery. So he did. David strikes him down for killing Saul. Wait, so he killed the guy that killed Saul? Yeah. Wait, so hold up, hold up. 
So David was an honorable man and refused to kill Saul. But then someone kills Saul and he goes and kills that guy. Because he came back to David and was bragging about how he took Saul's life. Yeah. And so because David was whatever and the deal was is if, I mean if you went brave to somebody back in the day that you killed somebody, it was a life for a life. So you would your life would be taken. <laughs> life for a life. Sorry, I could understand that. Yeah. But they were both chosen. Saul was anointed by God, and so was David. David was anointed by God when he was really young. And Saul would, David would not kill Saul because of that. He knew that. So he kept running away. Saul, being Saul, he was still trying to kill David, even though David was anointed by God. It shows character. And it all goes back to that verse that we talked about that Bell read 1 Timothy 4.12 Don't be skipping over anything I'm right. not Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young but set an example for the believers in speech, conduct, love faith and purity That's what you guys as young people need to do young Christians you need to be an example and here we're supposed to be an example to the believers and if you're an example to the believers, the other people that believe in Jesus, just think of the example you're going to be to the non-believers. Anybody got anything you want to add? I was just backtracking on that. I was reiterating what you said that because Saul was still king. And if you mess with the king and you go back and you're bragging about it, you will lose your life. Yep. You got it? No, actually, this, this time I do not. I, I cut Jess off last week. No, I apologize. No, you didn't. You left Jess. I just took notes last week. I'm thinking I'm going to be annoying, and this week I'm still trying to find, uh, I'm looking for your David. Um, yeah, oh. Where is that? <laughs> I don't think he did. Work under the table. Hamster. Tim, you got it in? I'm going to pray. Do we have any prayer requests today? Yeah. Hang on, i got to get my pencil and paper because I can't remember anything. I'm old. That's okay, Craig. Neither can I. Ow, it's my knee. <laughs> what do you got, Olivia? Uh, my mom and her baby. My knee. Your mom? I have marked you. You are mine now. Yes, Olivia's mom is going to have a baby. Isn't that a boy? Or... Yeah. What do you got? Well, I'm for the the you got a boyfriend? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <guy. laughs> Afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you realize how there's only a There's only what? Yeah, because there's only two genders. Anything we're supposed to pay, pray, pray specifically for? Um, his dad was being like, just hit him recently and he got a cut underneath his eye. I don't think he's at home. Who? My boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, Who's your boyfriend? Lee. Lee. Who? Who's Lee Beckridge. Oh, you got it. Who's leaving? How is he? We're taking prayer requests now. My sister in law and stepbrother, they're. Your sister in law and stepbrother? Yeah, they're not in the greatest place. Anybody else? My uncle. Craig? Yeah. No, Chris. Chris? No, no, no. That's my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Your uncle, Chris. My uncle, Chris. Not your dad, Chris. Yeah. Those idiots. What are we doing? Okay. Yeah. Do we have a wedding this weekend, and it's supposed to be not so nice in the city? With the snow coming. And Joshua has to come up with a speech. <laughs> and so does his father. Take, can you take so a video of us? I want to hear Josh give a speech. Yeah, can you send a video to us? You're going to wake it up. Who's <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, anybody else over here? Can you send us a video? Uh, you want to send us a video? video yeah. You have what? Josh. 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 You have a what? Uh, okay, guys, let's pray. That's all. Josh. Josh. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this night, and we thank you again for everyone who can be here tonight, Lord, and we pray again for those who can't, and we pray for our country, Lord, and that you will uh, just keep peace in this country at this time, Lord, and, and open hearts that your will will be done, Lord, in this country, and we um, pray at this time for my daughter Melanie, who is not really in the best way right now, Lord. We just pray that you'll bless her and keep her safe. Um, we pray for April Olivia's mom and their new baby that's coming in June. We pray that you'll just uh, keep everybody healthy and keep everybody safe in that situation, Lord. And, and for Isla's boyfriend with the situation at home. You know the situation, Lord. And, and we pray that you'll just bless that. And, Jackie's stepbrother and sister-in-law that you, you, the same type of situation, Lord, you know what it is, and we just pray for them, that you'll bless them and keep them safe, and, and Oli's Uncle Chris, we uh, pray for him, and you know the situation there also, Lord, we pray that you'll take care of that, and just to bless them and keep everybody in the family safe, and we pray for Ben's wedding coming up this weekend, Lord, we pray for weather, we pray for um, just family getting together. We pray for the speeches that everyone's going to do, and they're going to do a great job on, Lord. And we just pray that you keep everybody safe as traveling down and back, and and with this storm coming in, Lord, we pray for that. You know, bless that marriage. We just pray for this youth group that you'll just keep everybody here safe and healthy and keeping their eyes on you, Lord. We do this all in your name. Amen. Bye. 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 Bye.